chapter 6. We're continuing in our series through the Sermon on the Mount. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. But your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. All right, anybody here a worry wart? We have a few. And if you're not a worry wart, do you find yourself time to time full of anxiety, concern that goes beyond just what you can control, concern that, that begins to prey upon you, maybe keeps you up at night? Maybe one of those. I know I am. Time to time, I, I get overwhelmed. Uh, and I become anxious about things that are so far beyond me. There's a Garrison Keillor skit. How many people like Prairie Home Companion? Uh, that was really big about 10, 20 years ago. So much fun. And in Prairie Home Companion, they had these little ads. And this one came from the Fearmonger shop. It went something like this. <laughs> First snow of the season coming now to Lake Wobegon. So enjoy the, the whiteness, the pretty blanket of snow. And when you go out, make sure you have chains upon your wheels. Because if you don't, you could slide into a snowbank. There, be covered with snow and not be found until spring. But enjoy this first snow of the season. Brought to you by the Fearmonger Shop since 1953. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it seem like sometimes that's the way we hear news? And you know, God created us in a beautiful way. Uh, there are, there's the left side of the brain, the right side of the brain. And on that right side of the brain, there, it, there's an attention filter. That attention filter tells us that there are many things we don't have to worry about. But then there are those few things that we better be on. We, we better be careful and attend to those things. That attention filter that we have. I drove back from Ohio uh, this past week. It was 13 hours. And as I was driving, I would go from one stop to the next and not known what countryside I went by. You ever do that before? Yeah, we don't need to give our full attention to these things because we have gained that habit. We've, we're in a, a zone, if you will, in, in which we don't have to be focused. But then something comes up, right? Someone swerves into your way, into your, your lane, and all of a sudden, bam, you're on it. That attention is there. All of a sudden, something out of the ordinary. How about that bump in the night, right? And with that bump in the night, all of a sudden you're awake, the wheels start spinning. I need to pay attention to this. What could it be? Is someone breaking into my house? Are they opening a window? Are, are they gonna come in and, and steal or, or threaten me? And, and it's amazing what we can do with that creativity, what kind of story we can tell, right? You know, what's the possibility here? And some of us go to just sort of maybe a few things. It was the cat or it was the dog or something like that. And then sometimes, you know, it's that, you know, serial killer that's coming in after me. Our, our brain can do all sorts of things. But it's a good thing. God made us that way. But on the negative side, we can be manipulated by that. You've heard if it bleeds, it leads, right? Now, the media is great. It, it gives us so much information, helps us be connected with the world, helps us have a common dialogue. Uh, it, it really is great. But this is one way in which it can be detrimental because it wants to catch your attention. You know, 
Mom walks child home safely from school. Who's going to read that article, right? But mom and, and child uh, stopped by a, a man who was trying to rob them and took her purse. Boom, everybody's paying attention, right? If it bleeds, it leads. And we become engaged. And that's really what they want. They want our eyes to be on that paper as long as possible, as many days as possible. It's part of advertising. But let's think about this. It's interesting. Uh, 68% of people, according to Gallup, think that year by year, crime is getting worse and worse. Physical violence against us, as well as uh, the threats to our belongings. And yet, from 1993, violent crime has been down 50%. And property crime uh, and theft has gone down 75%. But it's reported 600 times more than it used to be. Do you see what's going on? It's not just a reflection of what's going on in society. It's what they want you to hear so that you are quickly engaged. And if they don't have anything local, they'll reach out around the uh, nation and around the world, right? All of a sudden, I'm being bombarded with things that I can't do anything about, but I have to be concerned. That's the way it works. Or how about uh, not just physical harm, how about loss of control? You get in an airplane. Anybody gotten up in the airplane <laughs> and you have your, your hands up on the armrest and your fingers start to grip tighter and tighter as the plane starts to go for takeoff? I've done that. I've let my worry uh, get a hold of me. But you know what? It's interesting. You know, back if you go to... Um, earlier flight, and you're looking in the, the 40s and the 50s, there used to be 2,100 deaths per 10 billion passenger hours. You know how much it is? Instead of 2,100, one death per 10 billion passenger hours. And yet we hear about those, and, and we will hear about it day after day after day before another crisis comes on, and, and it, it grips us. We can be manipulated and controlled by that. Uh, how about for political purposes? It, I'll never forget, uh, there was a run for presidency. Uh, Paul Ryan, who was uh, running for president, a candidate, hit the, his uh, opponent put out an ad, you may remember this, where it shows somebody rolling grandma around through a park going down the, the pleasant path, looking at different you know, things along the, the way, and then goes up to a cliff and just pushes grandma off. <laughs> Do you think that ad was effective? As crazy as it was, man, this is what Paul Ryan's going to do to you and to your grandma. <laughs> it's used, this fear is used to manipulate us. And too often we are drug into that and manipulated. Jesus is saying, you know, there are worries. There are enough worries each day. Don't look out onto this big stage and all that. Focus on each day at a time in your life. You see, God is intimately involved in our lives. He knows our worries. He knows our struggles, and he knows our concerns. He says, your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. You need clothes. You need food. You, you need uh, shelter. You know, God made us to need that, and so God is going to provide these things for us. I like in Isaiah 41, which states it so well, you are my servant. I've chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I'll strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not, fear not. You see, we are in a covenantal relationship with God who is taking care of all of our needs. It's when we forget that that we get into trouble and our worries, our concerns become worries and our worries become fears. God doesn't want that. God wants you to remember that you are in that special covenant relationship. As uh, David wrote in, in Psalm 100, we are your people, God. We are the sheep of your pasture. We know that you're going to tend to us. You're going to care for us. 
You're going to lead us to those green pastures. You're going to lead us to those quiet waters. Lord, you are so good in providing for us. You know, sometimes we get swept up in that, say, that fear of physical harm. And we need to remember what Scripture says in Psalm 91. He will cover you with his feathers under his wings. You will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You see, God wants to let us know that we don't have to fear, as it says here, the terror of night or the arrow that flies by day. We can relax and know that God is taking care of us as we are his covenant people. Or the loss of control. Deuteronomy 31 says, He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and don't be discouraged. We don't have to fear this lack of control, those, those things that are way beyond us. We know we can control this much, but then there's so many things out there. But he says, I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. And Jesus said, I'm giving you my Holy Spirit who's going to be in you and lead you and help you through every circumstance. Or how about that invisible threat? God is our refuge, says in Psalm 46, and our strength and ever-present help. Therefore, we will not fear. Now listen to this, this kind of fear of the nebulous out there, that abstract. And this is what the psalmist says to us. I will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, I will not fear, for God is with me. You know, there are so many things that we can worry about that we cannot affect. And those things we need to lift up to God and trust God to take care of us. Have you ever done this where you, Lord, you know, I, I lift this up to you and I, I, I put it before you. But then before you walk away in prayer, you reach down and you grab that and you walk away with that worry. You ever done that? You know, this is beyond me, God. I just put it over to you. And then let me just grab that up again. We don't really let go in full trust of our Lord, in full trust of what the Spirit is doing in us, through us, and around us. You know, Jesus is talking to an agrarian culture here. He said, you know, Look at the flowers. You know, look at the birds. I, I like this because it's, it's very simple. I encourage you to do this over the next week, to go out in nature, whether it's Audubon Park or City Park or in your own neighborhood. Take a deep breath and walk around and look at the beauty. Look at the flowering bushes. Look at the flowers that are all around. Look at the, the trees. Look at the birds. And the squirrels, the squirrels that find shelter in your attic, right? <laughs> the, the birds that make nests and they fly about and they are provided for. I, I like this. It's just go out and meditate on life around the world that God sustains, all this beauty of nature, and hear the word, I will give you even more because I care about you so much. But he says this. In this good and beautiful life, it begins when we trust God, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things are going to be taken care of. Trust God, your heavenly Father, to take care of those basic needs so that you can be unleashed to do the work that God has you specifically called to do. And what is that work? Jesus summarizes it in two commands, right? Right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And what's the other? Love your neighbor as yourself. This is the kingdom work that we have. And it's amazing when we focus on God as we love God with all that we are in our body, which is our labor that we, the, we do in the world to serve people uh, in caring for our neighbors, developing these relationships. We're going to find a place of peace and security, right? When we are actively bringing about the kingdom of God right around us, this place that God has given to us to make an impact. This week, as, it, as James Bryan Smith says in his book, say this to yourself, and maybe write it down so that you have it on your, your refrigerator. Say to this, I am a child of God, one in whom Christ dwells, 
and I'm living in the unshakable kingdom of God. Listen to that again. That affirmation, the truth, telling the truth of this world. I am the child of God, one in whom Christ dwells, and I'm living in the unshakable kingdom of God. This is God's care for you. you know, it's a cared for life, not a careless life, not a reckless life, but it's understanding that God cares for you and you can live a cared for life where worries are put away because you know the Lord's taking care of you in those things that he's entrusted to you that you are doing your best to bring the kingdom of God right there. The serenity prayer, which is used in AA, uh, such a beautiful prayer from uh, Reinhold Niebuhr. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So if you'll take out that little card that's on the front of your uh, bulletin, Take a look at that. It has an exercise for you this week. This is soul training, week 10. So the prayer is do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Take out a piece of paper. Write down all those things that worry you, all those things that make you anxious. All right? Write them down. Say, Lord, I confess these are things that I have been worrying me and that, that are, are just kind of churning me up inside. And give them to God. And say, God, show me the things that you want me to do that will make a difference here. What are those things? Because I want to do what you have called me to do it, with my family, uh, with my colleagues, wherever I am. Show me what I can do to bring about your kingdom. And Lord, I entrust you with the rest. Do that exercise once, maybe twice this week, and it'll help you get back to the center that we are God's and God cares for us deeply and that he's going to take care of all those things we worry about because he wants to bless us. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your grace that surrounds us. Thank you that we can trust you. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. So Lord, with that, we let go of those things that are preying upon us. We don't give a foothold for the devil to take us off the road to the left or to the right. No, Lord, we are engaging your kingdom and your good purposes in the world. In Jesus' name.